I'm sorry, just do a sweep out there. Um, where do you think? I think it's well signed. Johnson and I'm the chaplain to the university and I thank you for joining us this afternoon as we remember Rachel Wei Yu Zhang, a beloved member of the Queen's community whose death has left a seemingly irreparable hole in the hearts of her family and friends. When Rachel first arrived in Canada she attended Pickering College and so I thought it was appropriate we would start our service today with words from the residence director at Pickering. Laura Mason, who will be familiar to some of you, sent this brief reflection about Rachel's time at the school. Rachel spent grade 11 and 12 as a boarding student at Pickering College in Newmarket, Ontario. While she was here, she was very active in boarding and made friends easily. She was a member of the boarding social council and enjoyed many boarding activities with her friends. When she first arrived at Pickering College, she was quiet and reserved, but it didn't take long for her to make friends and come out of her shell. She participated in conditioning, cross country and tennis. She also served on the arts council. She graduated as an Ontario scholar. In her grad note in the 2015 yearbook, Rachel wrote the following, work hard in silence and let your success be your noise. That is great wisdom for a person so young and she will be missed by the many in her Pickering College community. Laura asked that I also read this passage, Night Fall on All. This is a, a reading that has been shared with generations of Pickering College students at the closing meeting for worship each year in June. They were written by Bain Cummer, a Pickering College student from 1927 to 1929, who tragically lost his life the summer after he graduated. Night falls on all. Yet our high thought 
our holy devotions and our steadfast loves shall live from age to age, from eternity to eternity. They shall not die, though all else sink into decay and oblivion, for they are woven of an immortal texture that the breath of forgetfulness may never mar. I thought then that we could take a few moments to reflect on what you, Rachel's friends, hold sacred and eternal about your experience of her. You were given a piece of paper and a pen as you came through the door. And I hope that you'll take a moment now to write something on it. It could be a single word or a small story about Rachel. If you want, you can come to the front and share your thoughts. If you would like to share but don't have the strength to read, please hand me the piece of paper and I will read f for you. In any case, once your reflection is finished, I invite you to bring it to the front and lay it on the table with the flowers here so that we can together construct a memorial for Rachel. I'm going to put a piece of paper here, the first one. Since Rachel's parents can't be with us today, it says, Dearest Beloved Daughter. written and you'd rather not proceed to the front you could raise your hand and someone will come and collect it from you if you want to place it on the table yourself you're welcome to do that
unless you want to read it, in which case you're welcome to do that. It's fine. All right, with, with all of our thoughts, um, or almost all our thoughts collected, come, come ahead. And if anybody wanted to speak, I don't, um, no pressure, but also I don't want to uh, rush people. Did, it, did anybody wish to say anything? That's fine. So then with all our thoughts collected, we'll watch a slideshow that's been uh, put together of Rachel's time here. Oh, do I need to do anything other than press play? Yes. Hannah, I'm sorry, can you come and make it? Oh, there you are. Can you come and make it run?
Yeah, I see, I see that the volume's not on. Did it pause when we... We leave it. Okay. Oh, my word. The ads are not part of the
our time together today with some advice to those of you who are overwhelmed and lost in your grief. So many of you seem to be facing the death of a friend for the first time and at a loss for what to do with this experience. I will speak personally, and then Ruth will share a reading for us of what has become some fairly popular advice about grief. I know what it is to lose friends at a young age. By the time I was 25, eight people that I knew that were close to my own age had died. Some were closer than others. A couple just slightly older role models. A couple were in my circle, but not what you'd call besties. And there were three with whom I was very close. They died of asthma, cancer, and a car accident. The greatest tra tragedies in a way were the wasteful deaths that came from drug overdose and playing chicken with a go train. Incredibly senseless. Senseless like the loss of your beautiful Rachel, who has been described to me as perfect. A great friend, a diplomat in her social circle, a wonderful listener, and a person who never had anything bad to say about anyone else. She was clearly intelligent and a hard worker. How could we not feel that her death has been a terrible waste? The thing is, it is a waste when someone dies so young. And there's no getting around that. But it would be a worse waste still if those who survive her did not learn what they could and make some meaning from her death. The best way to deal with grief is to have your feelings and to allow them to be your teachers. You can support each other in the challenge of making meaning out of something so senseless. Share with each other. Make space for the feelings of your mutual friends and work together to see what you can learn. As a very young person, I remember starting to make sense of the preciousness of life and the reality that actions have consequences. All of my mother's fears for my safety started to make so much more sense. And eventually, I would act more cautiously in the recognition that her fears were grounded in reality. While I became more thoughtful about potential consequences, I, like many who shared in the grief I experienced, also made a commitment to live life more fully. Each time I was able to integrate my grief, I was also able to reorder my priorities. I changed my habits so that I could better embrace the gift of life. Many of the friends in our circles took up the causes and cares of the friends we had lost. Some were able to maintain good relationships with the parents of the person who died. It is bittersweet for parents who have lost a child to watch others cross milestones that their children will not pass, but most find it a continuing, the continuing contact a source of comfort. It is an assurance that their child mattered not just to them, but also to others, and that other people share in that loss. If you are in a position to be close to Rachel's parents, it is a wonderful way to honor your friend. As you process your grief, you will find ways that are meaningful for you to remember Rachel and to honor the relationship you had with her. One way that comes quickly to mind is to live out her suggestion to work hard in silence and let success be your noise. Such fantastic advice. For some of you, you'll remember Rachel when you're shopping, and for others, it will be what seems to be Rachel's greatest legacy, to treat others with kindness and to act as a peacemaker. My dear late friend Sarah gave me a vintage blouse a couple of years before she died. I loved it and I wore it a lot, but after her death, I saved it for special occasions. She was a gutsy woman, so I wore the blouse when I needed courage to job interviews, speaking engagements, that sort of thing. 
I wore it also when I was doing something we would have liked to have done together, attending a particular show or going to our favorite coffee shop when I visited our shared hometown. Sarah's death was nearly 20 years ago now, and the blouse is pretty worn out, so I don't put it on anymore, but I have it tucked away. My intention is to use the best pieces of the fabric to adorn knitted hats for our mutual friends and her sister, all of whom still miss her. Not like we used to, but still, we miss her. I tell you this story for two reasons. One, as an example of a way that you could honor Rachel, you will find your own way based on who she was and who you were to each other. But you will find a way. Secondly, Sarah's blouse illustrates for me what I have learned about grief, that it is an overwhelming and difficult part of life, but one we can and must learn to live with. Some of you may have heard this before, but Sarah's blouse illustrates to me some famous advice about grief as written on Reddit. And Ruth is going to read that for us now. This advice was written by somebody old. I know I probably look old to most of you, but it was somebody even older than I. And here's what they have to say about grief. I'm old. What that means is that I've survived so far, and a lot of people I've known and loved did not. I've lost friends, best friends, acquaintances, co-workers, grandparents, mom, relatives, teachers, mentors, students, neighbors, and a host of other folks. I have no children, and I can't imagine the pain it must be to lose a child. But here's my two cents. I wish I could say you get used to people dying, but I never did. I don't want to. It tears a hole through me whenever somebody I love dies, no matter the circumstances. But I don't want it to not matter. I don't want it to be something that just passes. My scars are a testament to the love and the relationship that I had for and with that person. And if the scar is deep, so was the love. So be it. Scars are a testament to life. Scars are a testament that I can love deeply and live deeply and be cut or even gouged and that I can heal and continue to live and continue to love. The scar tissue is stronger than the original flesh ever was. Scars are a testament to life. Scars are only ugly to people who can't see. As for grief, you'll find it comes in waves. When the ship is first wrecked, you're drowning, with wreckage all around you. Everything floating around you reminds you of the beauty and the magnificence of the ship that was and is no more. And all you can do is float. You find some piece of the wreckage and you hang on to it for a while. Maybe it's some physical thing Maybe it's a happy memory or a photograph. Maybe it's a person who is also floating. For a while, all you can do is float and stay alive. In the beginning, the waves are 100 feet tall and they crash over you without mercy. They come 10 seconds apart and they don't even give you time to catch your breath. All you can do is hang on and float. After a while, maybe weeks, maybe months, you'll find that the waves are still 100 feet tall, but they come further apart. When they come, they still crash all over you and wipe you out. But in between, 
You can breathe. You can function. You never know what's going to trigger the grief. It might be a song, a picture, a street intersection, the smell of a cup of coffee. It can be just about anything, and the waves come crashing. But in between waves, there is life. Somewhere down the line, and it's different for everybody, you find that the waves are only 80 feet tall or 50 feet tall. And while they still come, they come further apart. You can see them coming, an anniversary, a birthday, a celebration, perhaps a landing at the airport. You can see it coming for the most part and prepare yourself. And when it washes over you, you know that somehow you will, again, come out on the other side. Soaking wet, sputtering, still hanging on to some tiny piece of the wreckage. But you will come out. Take it from an old guy. The waves never stop coming, and somehow you don't really want them to. But you learn that you'll survive them, and other waves will come, and you'll survive them too. If you're lucky, you'll have lots of scars from lots of loves and lots of shipwrecks. So that all sounds very heavy, but we, we want you to rest in the assurance that you'll find a way through this time in your life and that eventually the joy of the friendship you had with Rachel will overwhelm the feelings that you're having right now. We're going to have a reception after the service, which will end in a moment. Um, I've placed some sympathy cards on the far side of the tape, uh, on the tables at the far side here. If you haven't had a chance to express your um, sympathy to Rachel's parents, you're very welcome to sign one of those cards and we'll make sure that she gets all of them. And um, the pens that you were given to, to write on these notes, they actually have our email address on them for the chaplain's office. So please feel free to take a pen or keep the one you have. And if there's anything that, at all that you need, if you need someone to talk to or some support, um, as you're dealing with the loss of your friend, you're very welcome to be in touch with us and um, that email will get you straight to us, okay? So I'm just going to offer a very brief closing blessing and then we'll, um, we'll enjoy a time of fellowship together. Go now in peace, go now in peace. May the love of Rachel surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. Amen. Thank you for being here. <laughs>